morning training acts just procrastinating from some intervals with a little warm up of some strides and loosening up the back a little bit before we get into that. Last year around this time, the founder of Atreyu, Michael, he said that he had a shoe that he wanted to be my favorite shoe. And I was like, well, that's gonna be a pretty tall order because Nike, the Vaporfly 4% at the time were my favorite shoe. And like how many tens of millions of dollars went into designing that shoe? Well, these babies, the Atreyu artist might have done it. I get a ton of questions about these shoes, rightfully so, because they come in at under $100 and they're going up against shoes that are as much as $300 or more. Now, are they as good? Well, they're pretty damn good. After I go and with my lungs, we'll talk about that. I have yet to bark on YouTube. There's a first for everything, yes. Great shoes though. So all right, let's talk about the Atreyu Artist. Now, this Atreyu Artist is their race shoe. This is what they're looking at as a replacement for this kind of shoe, the Nike Vaporfly 4%. And one of the reasons that this sort of comparison came up is actually because at one point I said about Atreyu's original base model, which I really like for like general runs of like going out for 30 to 50 minutes, it lacked that little bit of snap and pop and responsiveness that I like from a shoe like this. Like this became my number one favorite shoe, not for everything, but just if you had to say, what is your number one favorite shoe that you really enjoy running in? It was the Nike Vaporfly 4%. So Michael from Atreyu wanted to build a shoe that had that little bit of pop, had that race responsiveness. So they ended up creating like most running shoe companies have over the past little while, a carbon plated running shoe with that foam in the shoe that is similar to the PBEX foam that's in the Nike Vaporfly 4% that returns a lot of energy. And I don't think they're using that same foam. I think they're using a bit of a different foam that has a lot of those same properties, but it's that combination of the carbon insole with that foam together that ends up creating a really nice fast shoe. Now the difference between these two shoes is Nike shoe, anywhere upwards to like $400, depending on the model that you're getting from Nike. The Atreyu Artist, as low as $100 for the Artist. That's incredible considering that, in my opinion here, I'm not gonna bury the lead anymore, I think that this shoe might actually be more of a favorite than this shoe, and I'll tell you why. So this artist shoe, it's not quite as snappy and like crazy springy as this here Vaporfly 4%, but it's still really responsive. I can still do really, really fast running and I still get that little bit of spring in the step. I still get that little bit of energy return from this. But what I like about it that's a little bit different is because that snappiness isn't as crazy, it's not as sharp a snap, which is probably what's creating that additional 4% or 6% or next percent or alpha fly or whatever version they're on right now. This shoe is a lot smoother. So I can feel comfortable in this shoe just doing general casual, low intensity, low heart rate running. And I can also feel really solid on it at that faster speeds. The issue with this shoe is that it really only feels comfortable when you start getting up to race pace or you start doing marathon efforts. And otherwise, just standing around, it's really not comfortable. You feel propped up, feel kind of wobbly. It's almost too stiff. Like this is me trying to bend a brand new Vaporfly 4%. This is me trying to bend the Atreyu Artist. So you can see that there's a little bit more bend in this than there is in this. Now this does loosen up over a little bit of time, just the same that this does, but I just find that this is a lot smoother kind of speed as opposed to like really fast jolting speed. So one of the questions might be, well, how about this for like your everyday runner? Well, yeah, I would actually say that this shoe, the Atreyu Artist, far more than the Nike Vaporfly 4% can be used for all of your running. And at the price point that it comes in at, 
it's certainly feasible to think that you could do that because it's a hundred dollars as opposed to three or four hundred dollars. Now the issue that I have with thinking that you're going to do that is that this responsive type foam, the more responsive and the more energy return you put into a foam sole for your shoe, the quicker it's going to break down. The Nike Vaporfly, maybe about 100 to 150 kilometers before I realized that that, that pot, the thing that made it the Vaporfly 4% was gone. Here, I would say it would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of half to three quarters of that. So while you're paying about a third for this shoe, you're getting maybe a half to 75% of the length of the shoe. So the dollar per mile for the Atreyu artist, still far, far better than the Nike shoe, but it's not like it's a straight third of the dollar per mile cost. So that makes it harder to think that you're gonna make this the everyday, all the time kind of shoe because then it still actually gets kind of expensive. The other thing about this is that it is still a fairly high stack height. You're propped up off the ground a little bit, so using this for something like strength training, you are feeling a little bit like you're too high off the ground to feel connected to the ground to feel stable. In addition to that, the sole on this is designed as completely smooth, like absolute sheer, like race slick tire kind of smooth. So that means that there's not a whole lot of traction on this. So if you end up having any issues where you're going on wet surfaces, you're going on snow, you're going on wood chips, you're going on any little bit of trail because you're a little bit higher up and this is totally slick. It's not that all arounder kind of shoe that you would need from something that you want to do all of your running in. This is just really, really good at going fast and feeling comfortable during the periods where you're going fast and the periods where you're going slow. It's also a really good shoe for if you wanna just step in and dip your toe into the water of the carbon enhanced shoe kind of game. This is a really good shoe to do that because you're not gonna be spending the three or $400 just to try a pair of shoes. I think you're gonna get every bit as good a performance, like maybe not, like I say that 4%, but certainly 2%, 3%, something that is a performance enhancer where you feel really confident going fast while not spending that huge price ticket. If I do have a complaint about this shoe, it's that the upper, and this is what Atreyu does, they nip out all of the bells and whistles to make sure that you're just paying for whatever performance you want, is that the upper is, you know, it's basically like, non-existent, it's like a slipper. But when you start getting up to really, really fast paces, and let's say you take a turn because your foot isn't really locked right in, it does feel just a little bit like you don't quite wanna get up to that really fast pace while you're taking a turn because it feels like your ankle could roll over. That said, most running races, even on a track are such gradual turns that you're not going to have that, but if you're running and taking fast turns, a lot for any which reason. I mean, A, you're gonna be asking for an injury. B, why are you doing your fast running in places that have such sharp turns? C, you're probably not gonna be doing that, so I wouldn't really worry about it. And then just to give you the stats on this, it's 7.8 ounces, that's super light, that's getting into racing flat territory. It is a seven millimeter heel to toe drop. I find that that's a really nice heel to toe drop to still feel like you're running naturally without feeling like you are running in a range of motion that just is kind of controlled by the shoe, like whereas this is about a 10 millimeter stated heel to toe drop, but a lot of people measure it at actually 12 millimeters. And this is half that, which I find to be a lot better. Studies actually show that a more neutral shoe with less heel to toe drop is a lot better for most runners who aren't yet competitive because it allows you to run in your natural biomechanics without getting put into unnatural biomechanics, which could actually lead to injury. So do I like this shoe? Hell yes, for $100 absolutely go and try it. If you want to try a fast enhanced shoe, I would say that this is definitely one that everyone should think about trying because that entry level price point is so, so good. And the performance is so very close to something that is three times the price. And you know what the people at Atreyu, like they're just so open and honest and, and kind of thoughtful with how they market their company and how they interact with 
customers. I think they're somebody that you should absolutely think about supporting. And if, hey, you can get a shoe that also performs really well and saves you money, I think it's definitely worth giving it a shot. So thanks to Treo for setting me up with a few pairs of these to try over the last, ooh, I think, almost eight to 10 months. Really good shoe that you've produced here and, um, and hopefully people try it out. Now, if you've been wondering about Detreu shoes or enhanced shoes and you found this video helpful, we put a lot of effort into trying this, like eight months of trying this shoe. So as a thank you, I would love if we saw you hit the like button below. Later, Trainiacs.